In this land build guide, I'm going to break down the best attributes, skills, feats, key powers, mythic path, and equipment you should focus on to make the most out of land. With this companion, I'll be going for the pure Zen Archer Monk build, which allows you to deal the most damage possible without the need to engage in multi-classing. If you're looking for a ranged DPS build that can easily destroy enemies while having excellent armor class, then this beginner-friendly land build Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous guide is for you. Lan is not your typical monk since he's a much more effective ranged combatant. His build focuses on being stealthy at the start of an encounter to surprise enemies, closely followed by shooting arrows from his bow. Specifically at level 5, Lan gains key arrows that allows him to use his fists instead of arrows to deal massive damage. The higher the level and the bigger his size, the more potent unarmed strike becomes as compared to his weapons. Note that this Zen Archer Monk feature is automatically implemented in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which means that you won't be activating it prior to the start of an encounter. However, even if you use Unarmed Strike for damage, you still utilize your bow for attack, specifically the enhancement bonuses you get, and for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction. At level 1, you automatically receive these feats, proficiencies, and abilities. Hunter adds lore nature and perception to his skills, which we won't be enhancing further in this build. Additionally, you gain proficiency with short bows and long bows. Unarmed Strike increases the damage dealt with unarmed strikes as influenced by land's level and size. At level 20, you deal 2 to 20 damage as a medium sized mongrel, which is much more potent versus any bow. Improved Unarmed Strike deal additional bludgeoning damage with unarmed attacks without provoking attacks of opportunity. Armor Class Bonus gains extra wisdom bonus for your armor class and combat maneuver defense. At level 20, you receive a maximum of plus 5 bonus. Monk Proficiencies increases the number of weapons you become proficient with, such as light and heavy crossbows, short swords, and javelins, to name a few. Remember that you still don't get any armor or shield proficiency. Combat Reflexes raises the number of attacks of opportunity you make, regardless of whether or not you're flat-footed, depending on your dexterity bonus. Perfect Strike allows you to make two attack rolls, similar to Advantage in D&D 5th Edition. You'll take the higher result between them. Point Blank Shot receives plus one attack and damage rolls bonuses with ranged weapons up to 30 feet. Zen Archer Weapon Proficiency adds composite longbows and shortbows to your list of proficient weapons. Flurry of Blows provides you with additional attacks that utilize your highest base attack bonus every time. In order to activate Flurry of Blows, you'll have to use your full attack action in a single turn without moving. Note that you can only use your bow attack, so you can't switch to unarmed attacks to deal damage close up. If you kill your target, you still have remaining attacks left, and as long as you don't perform a move action, you'll be able to automatically use them on another enemy beside the creature you just eliminated. By the time you reach level 20, you'll be able to attack many times around thanks to your base attack bonus, flurry of blows, and key power extra attack. As a result, you can kill several weak to average enemies in a single turn. This, together with dealing great unarmed strike damage, are the reasons to go pure for this Zen Archer Monk build because you're able to guarantee the deadly damage you inflict from a distance. What's more is you end up having a very high armor class since both of your dexterity and wisdom modifiers apply to it, together with the armor class bonus you receive as a monk, which other ranged classes like rangers aren't capable of. Going back to Flurry of Blows, you also have the option to add your Strength bonus to damage rolls as long as you equip a Composite Bow. All these things combined make Lan a Machine Gun Archer who can attack more than one enemy a turn from the very beginning of the game, which is absolutely deadly. Remember that you can't use Rapid Shot or Many Shot with Flurry of Blows, so we won't be selecting either of these feats for this build. For this Lan build, starting at level 4 and every 4 levels, you'll be able to add 1 point to any of your attributes. With land, you have an ideal attribute spread, so all you have to do is enhance them further to deal the most amount of ranged damage with your unarmed strikes. At level 4, you'll want to add 1 to Wisdom, since starting at level 3, land uses his Wisdom modifier when attacking with his bow. And it's also added to his armor class, which makes it harder for enemies to hit him. With a headband of Inspired Wisdom plus 2, you should have 20 Wisdom with a plus 5 modifier. Next is Strength, which you can increase by 3 points total at level 8, 12, and 16 to deal great damage. Thanks to the racial bonus you get from being a mongrel as well as the belt of physical flow plus 2, you'll end up having 22 strength with a plus 6 modifier. Lastly, you should invest 1 point into dexterity at level 20. Your dexterity modifier improves armor class much like your wisdom modifier. Similar to wisdom, you ought to have 20 dexterity with a plus 5 modifier. When it comes to skills, it's ideal to focus on stealth, mobility, and athletics. Activating stealth before approaching enemies allows him to surprise them. Surprise attacks are advantageous to your party because for one full round, each member is able to prepare for the fight, whether they intend to move closer to their targets in order to hit them in succeeding rounds, or to curse and damage them. During this time, since they've been caught unaware, they won't be able to perform any actions. Next is mobility, which lets you cross bridges and gaps with ease. This means that your party is able to travel to unreachable places without suffering HP losses. Mobility is important especially at higher levels when you frequently have to pass by difficult terrain. Similarly, we have athletics. It allows you to move boulders or heavy bookshelves to reveal hidden paths. 
All of these skills work well together due to your good strength and dexterity bonuses. From levels 3 to 20, you'll be able to choose 9 feats for land with 1 feat at every other level. You'll focus on dealing damage with your ranged unarmed strikes and key powers. This powerful build lets you eliminate enemies efficiently thanks to the number of attacks you're able to execute in a single turn. Starting at level 3, you ought to take these important feats in the following order. Deadly Aim. Significantly boosts your ranged damage rolls, allowing you to inflict more damage for every attack you make. Starting at level 4 and onward, the bonuses you receive increases, thereby enhancing your damage. However, this doesn't come without a price. You also take an iterative penalty to your attack rolls, but it shouldn't be an issue since you're able to attack multiple times per turn and your wisdom modifier is high. Improved Initiative. Get a plus 4 initiative bonus check to increase your chances of going first in combat. In the event that enemies do surprise you, you want to improve the chances of land attacking first and obliterating them. Clustered Shot. Significantly enhances your total damage. Clustered Shot lets you add all of the damage from each of your attacks you make before subtracting your target's damage resistance. Just make sure that you use your full attack. Stealthy. Increases mobility and stealth skill check bonuses. Hammer the Gap. Deal extra damage based on the number of successful hits you're able to inflict on the target. Note that the hits need to be consecutive for this damage to be powerful. Toughness. Increases your max HP. Crane Style. Gain plus one dodge bonus when you activate fighting defensively. Additionally, the penalty you receive for attack rolls decreases from minus four to minus two. Crane style is useful to improve your armor class in challenging situations such as boss fights. Critical focus bolsters your chances of confirming your critical attack roll. Blinding critical permanently blind your target on a critical hit. If the enemy succeeds their fortitude saving throw, they'll be temporarily dazzled instead. If you've noticed, I didn't include snapshot in this list since you automatically get it at level nine. This feat lets you threaten when enemies are near you in order to execute attacks of opportunity when wielding a ranged weapon. As a Zen Archer Monk, you get 5 bonus feats which don't stack with your regular feats. The advantages of having them include gaining earlier access to some feats as well as selecting extra ones that synergize very well with this build. For instance, Improved Precise Shot has a base attack bonus requirement of 11. We're able to get this much earlier even when our base attack bonus is 6. Precise Shot prevents you from incurring an attack roll penalty when you shoot a target who's engaged in melee combat. Improved Precise Shot, ignore your missed chance against enemies that are partially concealed like from the effects of blur or fog. Dodge, gain plus one dodge bonus to your armor class. Improved Critical, doubles your bow's threat range to improve the chances of pulling off critical hits. Combat Mobility, receive dodge bonuses to armor class when you move in and out of any threatened area. Instead of spells, Zen Archer Monks have key powers which they can activate based on the number of key pool points they have. These points are calculated as one half of your monk level plus your wisdom modifier. From levels 4 to 20, you'll be able to select 8 key powers. Note that the first 4 key powers have to be in order. Bark Skin Receives an enhancement bonus to improve armor class. At level 12, you receive the plus 5 maximum bonus. Note that this doesn't stack with the Amulet of Natural Armor plus 3 since they essentially have the same bonus type. As such, it's best to take this key power because it'll provide you with higher armor class. Wholeness of Body lets you heal yourself. Restoration. Dispel temporary ability damage while restoring ability score points lost as a result of that same damage. Diamond Soul. Gain spell resistance. You'll notice that these key powers are related to either buffing up your defense or restoring you from damage. Avoid taking those that deal damage such as key power Scorching Ray because you can only attack with this once and the damage you inflict is much lower compared to your bow attack plus unarmed strike damage duo. You can then choose the other four in whichever order you prefer. You can pick 10 mythic abilities and feats in any order to make land much more powerful in combat. For mythic abilities, you should acquire the following. Distracting Shots inflicts an armor class penalty against melee attacks which your frontliner allies can take advantage of. Ranged Shots stack bonuses due to missed ranged attacks. This lets you improve your succeeding attacks to finally hit the enemy. Abundant Key increases key pool points. Ever Ready receive attack and damage roll bonuses after performing an attack of opportunity. Expose Vulnerability. Deal additional divine damage after successfully hitting a target for a third time. This is useful against those with high HPs. For Mythic Feats, you're going to select the ones that significantly enhance your initiative checks, attack rolls, damage rolls, and damage while ensuring that your armor class is considerably high. Specifically, you should aim for the following in this order. Deadly Aim Mythic, Dodge Mythic, Improved Initiative Mythic, Point Blank Shot Mythic, and Weapon Focus Mythic. For Lion's Equipment, you want to stick with one type of bow to enhance its capabilities further based on the feats you choose. This is valid for Way of the Bow, Point Blank Master, and Improved Critical Feats. You can opt for a Composite Longbow or a Composite short bow like the Entrapping Longbow or Hunter's Assurance, respectively. Composite Bows let the Zen Archer add their Strength modifier for increased damage. What's valuable with these is the Enhancement bonus they provide that adds to your total damage. 
If you're still having trouble hitting targets at earlier levels, it's best to equip a Masterwork Bow to receive a plus one attack bonus. Additionally, remember to bring two to four bows made out of different materials for the purposes of swapping between them to overcome enemy damage resistance. This is essential because you can't make use of key strikes since you won't switch to unarmed attacks. Since Lan isn't proficient with armor, he'll be wearing a robe instead, particularly the Robe of Order. This increases your key pool by two points while providing you with attack roll bonuses. When it comes to accessories, it's important to equip the Bracers of Armor plus 5 and Ring of Protection plus 3 to boost armor class. Meanwhile, Cloak of Resistance plus 3 enhances your saving throws against the effects of magical attacks. As mentioned in the Attributes section, you also need to wear the Headband of Inspired Wisdom plus 2 and Belt of Physical Flow plus 2 to improve Wisdom, Strength, and Dexterity. Final Tips Lan's build focuses on dealing great damage using the Flurry of Blows ability. This ability allows him to make all of his attacks at maximum base attack bonus when making a full attack, including additional attacks, which is far more accurate than simply attacking normally where your base attack bonus drops off after each shot. This is the reason we use a composite bow, deadly aim, and pump strength for extra damage, because we aren't worried about him missing subsequent attacks. Make sure to cast Enlarge Person on land if you have a caster like a Shaman in your party to increase his size. This greatly improves the base damage he deals with his unarmed strikes from 2d10 as a medium-sized monk to 4d8 as a large-sized monk at level 20. You'll have to carefully plan out your feats since there are only a limited number of bonus feats you can pick from. This is the reason why I didn't get dodge and improved critical earlier, otherwise you won't be able to maximize the ones you really need. Lastly, activate key power extra attack before you attack and if you have no intention of moving during your turn, or else you'll waste this as well as your key pool points. Preserve extra attack for challenging enemies since you don't have an unlimited number of points at your disposal. Stay tuned for more companion build guides and be sure to check out our Twitch channel or the Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous Wiki if you have questions about the game. What did you think of the guide? Which companion would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments below.